Tired of typing your password twice just to get into AVD? Let's fix that. This walkthrough shows you exactly how to enable single sign-on in Azure Virtual Desktop. By default, users sign in once to AVD, then again to access their session host. It's annoying and some may bypass that second login by saving credentials, which isn't secure. The better way is to enable single sign-on or SSO so users only sign in once. If this video helps, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend or colleague. It helps the channel grow and is greatly appreciated. Check out my courses at udemy.com, including a beginner's guide to the AZ900, and a big thanks to my channel members. Your support is appreciated. All right, let's dive in. Normally, users sign into the AVD client, like the Windows app, and then again to the session host, even though it's the same credentials. The client doesn't pass them through by default. It can, but we need to configure that. SSO with AVD isn't as simple as passing credentials from the client to the session host, since storing credentials in the client isn't secure. Instead, AVD SSO must be enabled in Enter ID, adjustments made in Windows AD if used, and other changes are required. This video covers those steps closely following the Microsoft documentation. Here's what we'll cover. We'll create a dynamic group for session hosts. We'll enable enter authentication for RDP. We'll hide the consent prompt. We'll create a Kerbro server object. We'll review conditional access policies. Then we'll enable SSO at the host pool and finally we'll test it all. This video will guide you through each section step by step. And I suggest trying things out in a lab environment before implementing them in production. That's always a good idea. To follow along, you'll need certain permissions either the Entra built-in RBAC roles of Application Administrator or Cloud Application Administrator or similar privileges. If you use Windows AD, you'll also require domain and enterprise admin rights. Your session host should run Windows 11 or Windows 10 Enterprise, single or multi-session, or Windows Server 2020-12 or newer, with all cumulative updates as of October 2022. Using a recent version of Windows 11 is recommended. Additionally, session hosts must be either enter joined or enter hybrid joined. Enter hybrid joined means they're connected to Windows AD and synchronized to enter ID with enter connect sync. Enter domain services or Azure AD as it used to be called is not supported with AVD and SSO. Single sign-on works with the Windows app on Windows, Mac, iOS, and web. It's also supported on the remote desktop client, but that's deprecated, so don't use that. And although technically optional, you'll want EnterID P1 or P2 licensing for conditional access and dynamic groups. Now that that's out of the way, let's kick things off by creating a dynamic group for our session host. This is used to skip the consent screen later, making SSO smoother. Azure Premium Licensing is required for our dynamic groups. We'll build the groups based on host names, like those starting with AVD. So consistent naming conventions is key. Sure, we could use static groups, but we'd have to manually add every existing and newly created session host. I'd forget to do that. So we're going dynamic. Let's head to the Entra portal to get started. Here we are in the Entra admin portal at entra.microsoft.com. We need to get a few things ready before we enable SSO. First, we need an Entra group that contains the session hosts. We could use a static group, but we need to add all session hosts today and going forward to that group. I can't remember things like that, so this example will use a dynamic group. Let's go to Groups and add a new group. Leave the group type as Security and give it a name, AVD SSO Host for this example. Give it a description, SSO Group for AVD Session Host for this example. Leave Role Assignment set to No and change the membership type to Dynamic Device. Add group owners if you'd like and then select Add Dynamic Query. This is where we build a query that will dynamically add session host to the group. At the first line, set the property to display name. The operator is starts with, and the value for this example is AVD. Of course, you would add the first few values of your session host names. This requires a consistent naming convention. That's not too difficult if you're using automation like Bicep or Terraform to create host pools and session hosts. If we had multiple prefixes, we could add another with the OR operator. With the OR operator, the rule will apply if either conditions are met. If we use AND, both conditions would need to be met. If you have a second name prefix, fill out the rule the same as the first. 
and you can continue on with additional name prefixes. I wish there is a better way to target session hosts. Some information online mentions setting the OS type to equals enterprise multi-session. Unfortunately, that won't work with an enter ID dynamic rule. We can test that as well as the name rule by going to validate rules. Add a device to test against. This example will add one of the AVD session hosts. It passed, let's view the details. It matched the display name. And since this is an OR condition, we only need to match on one of the rules. Notice the device OS type failed. The value is Windows. If we use that value, all Windows devices would get added to the group. We don't want that. Let's close this and go to Configure Rules. We can see all the values that are available to use under Properties. Another option would be to create a custom extension attribute and query on that. This example, we'll just use display name. We can delete the rule that failed. We'll save then create. Once it's created, let's go to All Groups and open our new group. It could take some time for group membership to update, up to 24 hours for large organizations. This example is a small lab and it just took a few minutes and a page refresh. We can move on to enabling enter authentication for RDP, but keep in mind that the session hosts need to be a member of the group for that to work. Next, we'll enable enter authentication for RDP. This lets RDP issue access tokens so users can log into AVD session host securely. This change happens at the tenant level and we'll need the application admin or cloud app admin RBAC roles or similar permissions. We'll use the cloud shell with PowerShell for this and keep it open at the end. We'll need it for an upcoming step. The next step is to enable enter authentication for RDP. This lets RDP issue access tokens so users can log in to AVD session hosts. We'll use the PowerShell cloud shell for this step. This change happens at the enter tenant level and requires either the application administrator or cloud application administrator role or similar permissions. We'll open the PowerShell cloud shell. Any subscription is fine. A link to the commands is in the description below. First, we need to import the graph authentication and applications modules. And again, you can find these commands at the link below. Then we need to connect to graph with the application read all and application remote desktop configure read write all scope. Follow the instructions to authenticate to graph. You may have to accept a permission request like the one shown on the screen. Click accept to continue and return to the cloud shell once authenticated. Once we've authenticated to graph, we can get the Windows Cloud Login Service Principle and assign it to a variable. The Windows Cloud Login Service Principle ID is the same for all tenants. The Microsoft Documents has an if command that will check if enter authentication for RDP is enabled and enable it if it's not. Run that if you'd like. For this example, I'll first run the get command to view the current status. It's not enabled. So now I'm going to run the update MG service principle remote desktop security configuration command. And again, feel free to just run the entire if command if you'd rather do that. We'll run that command. And once it finishes, we'll run the git command again to check the status. That's good, it shows true. We now have enter authentication for RDP enabled on the tenant. And this only has to be done once on the tenant. Now that that's enabled, we can move on to the next step. Let's make SSO even smoother by hiding the consent prompt users see when connecting to a session host. By default, Entra shows a simple verification dialog to use enter authentication for session hosts. Users click yes to confirm and Entra remembers up to 15 hosts for 30 days. We can skip that step entirely by configuring a trusted device group in Entra ID. We'll use the dynamic group we created earlier to do that. This step uses some of the same variables from when we enabled enter authentication for RDP. So if the cloud shell session is still open, keep going with that. If that's closed, no worries. Just reopen the cloud shell, import the graph modules, connect to graph, and assign the Windows Cloud Login Service Principle to a variable. Those are steps two and three from the Microsoft Docs linked below. Let's walk through that next. Here we are in the Azure portal. We're continuing from enabling enter authentication and using the same Cloud Shell session. If you close that session, you'll need to reopen a new Cloud Shell session, import the graph modules, connect to graph, and assign the Windows Cloud Login Service Principle to a variable. 
steps two and three from the enable enter authentication for RDP guide. Let's go to enter ID, then groups and open the SSO device group we previously created. We need the group's display name and object ID coming up. Next, let's create a target device group object with the new object command. And of course, a link to these commands is in the description below. Next, we'll provide the group object ID that's available from the portal. Then the display name. Once that's finished, we can add the group to the target device group object with this command. That output looks good. We've now added the group to hide the consent prompt. If you have more than one group of session hosts, repeat these commands to hide the consent prompt for each group. Next, we'll set up a Kerberos server object. This allows Enter ID to issue Kerberos ticket granting tickets to one or more Active Directory domains. So users can sign in with modern Enter credentials and still access traditional Windows AD resources like file shares used with FSLogix. Not every environment needs this. A Kerberos server object only needs to be created if the session hosts are hybrid joined, meaning they're joined to Windows AD and then sync to Enter ID or if the session hosts are Enter ID joined, but the users are sourced from Windows AD and need access to Windows AD resources. If using Enter ID joined session hosts with cloud native users, this step can be skipped. In that case, there's no domain controller, so we wouldn't be able to create the object anyway. The Kerberos server object is created in Windows AD and then synced to Enter ID using Enter Connect Sync. It's not tied to any server. It's simply an identity that Enter uses to issue Kerberos tickets for Windows AD. To set this up, two accounts are required. One that's a member of both the domain admin and enterprise admin group that's used to create the computer object and another Enter ID account with the hybrid identity administrator RBAC role. We'll run setup with PowerShell on the same machine that runs Enter Connect Sync. We could also use a machine with the microsoft.online.password synchronization.rpc.dll installed. But for this walkthrough, we'll stick with the sync server. Let's log in and get started. Here we are in PowerShell on the same computer running Enter Connect Sync. And again, links to the code used in this video are below. To start, we'll run the first command to ensure that TLS 1.2 is used for the PowerShell gallery. Let's run that. And next, we'll add the Azure AD Hybrid Authentication Management module from the PowerShell gallery. You may have to accept some prompts as it installs. Installing the module may take a minute if it's not already installed. Once that's done, we'll verify the cloud endpoint with the get az ad kerbro server endpoint command. Let's run that. It defaults to zero, the Azure public cloud. We can change it with the set Azure AD Kerbro server endpoint command. This example is on the public cloud, so we'll leave it as is. Next, we need to provide some credentials. We need to authenticate to Windows AD with domain admin rights to create a Kerberos server object. And we need to sign into Enter ID with an account that has the hybrid identity administrator role. There are four examples. We'll review each and you can select the one that best fits your environment. The domain variable will pull the value of the current user's logged in domain. Then we have to authenticate to Enter ID and Windows AD. The first example gets the credentials for the AD user account that's replicated to Enter ID and has Enter ID or Azure AD hybrid identity administrative rights. It also requires a separate account with domain admin credentials. If you're logged into a computer that has Enter Connect Sync installed, you may already be logged in with an account that has domain admin rights. The second example skips the domain admin credentials. It uses the credentials you're logged in with. It will prompt for the cloud credentials with hybrid identity management rights. Let's move on to the next example. The cloud account has elevated rights and may be protected with MFA, or you may not use accounts replicated from Windows AD for cloud administrative tasks. In both cases, we don't provide cloud credentials. We supply the user principal name of the cloud account with hybrid identity admin rights. With this example, we still provide local domain admin credentials. The last example is the same as the previous, only we don't supply the local domain admin credentials. The command will use the logged in credentials to create the Kerbro server object. This is the scenario I'm using in this example. Select the one that best fits your environment. The domain variable will use the domain of the current logged in user. 
After that, we'll update the user principal name. We'll highlight and run the domain and UPN variables. Let's view the domain variable just to verify it's using the correct domain. That looks correct. Next, we'll run the set Azure AD Kerbero server command. This is the command that will create the server object. It will ask you to sign in. I'm using the UPN for this example because it does have an MFA prompt. Okay, that's good, that finished. Let's run the next command to view and verify the Android Kerbero server. Credentials work the same for this command. This example won't use the domain credential parameter because I'm logged in as a domain admin. As noted on the screen, if you do use domain credentials, use the UPN for the domain username. That's good, it shows it exists. That shows the information on the Android Kerbero server. And one additional item to note, the KRB TGT keys should be rotated regularly. The recommended method is to use the commands below. Use the same credential options used to create the Entra Kerbero server to rotate the keys. Also note, if you close the session, you may have to recreate those variables. That is how to create the Entra Kerbero server object. Let's check conditional access policies next. The original AVD app with the ID that starts with 9CD handles logging into the AVD gateway and AVD web. This is how many organizations target AVD logins with conditional access policies through that app. When SSO is enabled, a new Entra app called the Windows Cloud Login is used to authenticate users to session host. That has the app ID that starts with 270. The Windows Cloud Login app handles session host logins. Microsoft recommends matching policies between both apps. At least review them and verify users have the expected experience when they log in. Let's take a look at the conditional access policies. Here we are in the Entra portal at entra.microsoft.com. If we go to conditional access policies, let's open an AVD policy to use as an example. We're not going over all the settings here, just what relates to SSO with AVD. Let's open target resources. This example targets the Azure Virtual Desktop resource. Notice it shows the app ID. Also, the AVD app may be called Windows Virtual Desktop app for tenants that used AVD before the name change. When we enable single sign-on for Azure Virtual Desktop, we get another app called the Windows Cloud Login used to authenticate users to the session hosts. We can add that to match the policy or use it to create a new MFA policy. Be sure to review your MFA policies to verify the users have the expected experience when they're logging in. We're almost done. Next, we'll enable SSO at the host pool level. This is done in the RDP properties at each host pool. Let's log in to the Azure portal and set that up. The next step is to enable SSO at the host pool. This is done in the RDP properties configuration of each host pool that will use SSO. Let's enable it on a host pool by going to AVD in the Azure portal. Select the host pool and go to settings, then RDP properties. From connection information, we have the Microsoft Entra single sign-on option. From there, select connections will use Microsoft Entra authentication to provide SSO. Once selected, save the changes. That is how to enable SSO at the host pool. Repeat these steps for each host pool that will use SSO. Nice work getting this far. Now let's test it to make sure everything works. Your users are gonna love skipping that second login. The last step is to verify it works. We're going to use the Windows app and sign in as a user assigned to the host pool. The session hosts in this pool are hybrid joined to Windows AD. Notice MFA is enforced for the first step, logging into the AVD environment. We reviewed those settings with the conditional access policy earlier. Once logged in, let's connect to the host pool. And that completes without having to sign in again. The credentials were passed from enter ID to the domain join session host. That is how we enable SSO in the tenant and on the host pool. Congratulations, you made it. I hope this walkthrough helped you get SSO working in AVD. If it did, please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching.